Hallelujah. So God has brought us safe into his kingdom of his dear son, right? But how many of us truly believe that? How many of us change our thinking and say, Yes, Lord, I am in your kingdom. You have set me free. You have done your part. And we, like Adam and Eve, even today, believe the lies of the devil. And that's why we are still in his trap. Because he said, he said the words that were contrary to God's word, and he's saying the same thing even today. Now, what did the devil do to this family? He did not have to do anything. He had to only keep them thinking that they are in captivity and some relative has done this black magic and because of which all their life, every time they are thinking nothing good can happen in our life because we are under black magic. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Then, By whom we are set free, that is, our sins are forgiven. By whom we are? Set free. How many times do you go and tell God, set me free? See, the problem is, we are saying, first you set me free, let me see, let me experience, and then I will believe I am set free. Whereas God is saying, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. You first believe you are set free, and then you keep on believing and move into action, then you will experience your freedom. Are you understanding? Yes. So a person who is walking in the spirit is saying, I don't have any physical evidence to prove what I'm saying, but I have only spiritual evidence through the promise of God and I set my mind on those things. Believe me, when I was just one month old in the Lord and I read that scripture, when you lay hands on the sick, they shall be healed. And I started laying hands. And at that time, people also told me, be careful when you lay hands, that sickness will come on you. <laughs> now, that's not recorded in the Bible. Okay? And I was laying hands, and I, I, God is a witness what I'm saying. There were people with whom I was, and they were about 14 years, 17 years in the charismatic. And when we went to meet the sick person and to lay hands, I was the youngest among them. And we were six or seven of them who went to pray. And I was the first one to put my hand and pray. And we all started praying. And when I opened my eyes a little, I saw everybody's hands are from a distance. But nobody was to touch him. Why? Their mindset is, if I lay hands, that sickness will come on me. I was the only one. And after years, I saw them still in the same position, whereas God had already taken me from uh, place to place, from glory to glory, because I changed my mindset. Not to believe what they said, but to believe what God said. So in a matter of two months time, or two or three months time, I was already casting out demons. Because I chose to believe what God said. Now imagine a person who has been forgiven of all that uh, worst sinful life, and in three months to believe that God has made me righteous, God has wash me clean, I am absolutely clean, absolutely new and now Lord if you said I am going to believe it and I am going to move and I began to move by faith and they even said be careful that you don't go alone I said Lord they all say don't go alone what do I do if I have got somebody who is scared and if I take him he will run away so what is the use of taking him I am going with you, you are my partner, you are one and I am one we are now two, let's go praise God and from that, so there should be somebody to be with you. That's what they told me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> praise God. <laughs> and when you are just a baby Christian, praise God, there are many things that the elders will tell you. Praise God. But when the elders are telling you, first see how is their lifestyle. Because if they are in bondage, they are telling, we want company, you also join us in that bondage. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So what have we written now? Hello, what have we written? So, so your thoughts, failure to change your mindset by align, aligning your thoughts with His word, will cause you to do what? Miss out. To miss out what? 
on all that God wants to do in your life. Do we do we do we do that? Come on. Yes. Now is that kind of thinking? Yes. Now example is Ephesians 1 3. Where are the blessings of God located? In your spirit. And where are we looking? We are looking it towards heaven. Where was Eve? Before God created Eve. He was inside of Adam. Why did you look and smile like this? <laughs> there was Eve inside Adam. Did Adam know it? No. Was he sad? Yes. Where was the solution? Inside him. But he did not know. So what did God do? Put him to sleep and brought out what was inside him. The same thing is saying. Your whole blessed future is inside you. I poured it in your spirit. And this will come out only if you change your thinking and set it on my word. Then the best will come out of you. Fifteen years back, did I ever think I will go to Kuwait every month? When I would see people coming from Dubai and go, Aray, bapre, Dubai se aya re. <laughs> <laughs> no, did, did, when we were small, did we have that mindset? Yes, no, let, yes, let's be honest. Yes, 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 and and yes. when the person would come, we would look like this. Now when I say, Aray Lord, I never thought these yes. people who are in Dubai for years, they also don't travel like me every month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every day is, is it right? Yes. So what kind of a mindset have you said? I never thought this was what God had called me for. It was not my desire, it was not my plan. But how did it happen? I began to change my thinking one day at a time. And what I set my thoughts on the word of God opened the door of future. So according to the word of God, where are the blessings located? And all this time, where are we looking? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So God has already blessed us with, according to Ephesians 1.3, He has blessed us with all. Come on, is He going to bless you or has He blessed you? So how many times are you setting your mind that I am blessed with all spiritual blessings? Thank you Lord, I am blessed with all spiritual blessings. Thank you, Lord. I am blessed with all spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings in? In the heavenly places in Christ? Jesus. Jesus. Have us Christ Jesus? Yes. Within us. So where is the blessing? Where are we looking? So, from now on, if we are looking anywhere else, is it called carnal thinking? So most of the time, we are, what are we? Carnal thinking or spiritual thinking? So if you are kind of thinking, can you receive what God has already uh, kept reserved for you in His kingdom of light? No. So all the time what are you doing? Are you angry with God? Yeah. Lord, why, is, why are you not answering? That brother Johnson comes uh, and everything you give him and I am praying night and day and then you will fast me and I, you are not giving me anything. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, God has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Okay? The blessing is what? The ability that comes from God. For what? To do. To do His work. And His ability is super. My ability is natural. When that comes on me, I have now super natural ability. Praise God. That so, I am able to do what I could not do before. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, when did you receive this? All spiritual blessings. When you became born again. So, have you received the root now? Yes. So, if you have received the root, can you produce the fruit now? Come on. Yes. Yes. But do we really believe that we have the root now? That's the big question mark. What do you mean by God again? 
Were you born from your mother's womb? Mm -hmm. Sure? Yes. Okay. When you and I and every one of us were born, we were born with a corrupted nature and that corrupted nature was to rebel against God. Okay. okay? <clears throat> so every time our thoughts were selfish, not God conscious, but self-conscious. Okay. A day came when somebody preached to you the gospel of Christ and said that Jesus took your place on the cross, he is the son of God and said everything. I am 100% sure the person who shared with you Jesus, that person himself has not seen physical Jesus. Agreed? And he did not even show you that this man is Jesus. No. That person did not even show you Jesus on the cross. Mm -hmm. Nothing. But yet you chose to believe what you did not see. Yeah. The moment you chose to believe, even with your senses, you could not see or feel, but you chose to believe. God put his power in you at that time and destroyed that corrupted spirit and gave you his spirit and you became born again. So when you became born again, that Colossians 1, what you read, all that happened at that very moment. Okay? So you and I were born from a mother's womb. Now we are no longer born from a mother's womb. Now we are born from God. We were born of Adam and Eve. Now we do not, we are not born from Adam and Eve. We are born from, uh, through Jesus Christ. Did you get that? So when you got born again, what happened? God put his spirit in your spirit. The spirit that created the world is in you. So that same spirit is willing and wanting to do great things in your life. And how is he going to do? He has given you his word. And he's saying, set your mind on these things. When you set your mind on these things that are declared in the word, you will be walking in the spirit, and that walking in the spirit will bring forth the manifestation of God's Praise God. So write down. Jesus' words are spirit and life. The, the spirit of God Quicken it. The Spirit of God quickens or gives life. The Spirit of God quickens, quickens or gives life to or gives life to the things you desire from God. The things you desire from God. Please write the next line in capital letters. Don't forget this definition, please. Walking in the spirit, walking in the spirit, is walking in agreement, is walking in agreement, with the word. Walking in the spirit is walking in agreement with the word, which makes you spiritual. When you walk in the spirit, when you walk in the spirit, You are on the path of life. You are on the path of life. An experience. An experience. Supernatural result. When you walk in the spirit. 
when you walk in the spirit, Satan has no access to you. Satan has no access to you. So praise the Lord. Can I take some revision because my precious sister has come? Let me. Let me. We learned that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Those who walk not after the flesh, but walk after the spirit. Praise the Lord. So we learned that every one of us want to receive from God. But to receive from God, we have to do our part and which will involve walking in the spirit. And just now you wrote what is walking in the spirit? Hmm? Is walking in agreement with the word which makes you spiritual. So, so you have to walk in agreement. agreement to God's word. So when a person does not walk in agreement to God's word, means his thinking is contradicting to God's word, then what happens? He will miss out all that God wants to do in his life. Praise God. Praise God. And an excellent example that we shared was that we always go to God and say, God, please bless me. Whereas Ephesians 1.3 says, that God has already blessed me. Now, when I say, God, please bless me, that's carnal thinking. Second thing that we believe is that God's blessings are in heaven and it's going to come into our life. But according to God, He said, God has blessed me with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. And where is Christ Jesus? In us. So where is God's blessing? In us. In us. Praise God. Praise so if God's blessing is in us and blessing, the word blessing means God's ability. So if God's ability is super, my ability is natural and this super ability God has put in me. So when I start believing that, then I am able to do what I could not do before. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, God has put this blessing in us through which we all can experience physical manifestation of what God has declared in His Word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then we also read that when a person declares, I am blessed, that's the time he defeats carnal thinking. So, how do you destroy carnal thinking? By declaring what God has declared. For example, by his stripes and by his wounds I am healed. Carnal thinking or spiritual thinking? Spiritual. Spiritual. spiritual thinking. Now when I say, Lord, please heal me. That's carnal. So, Lord, I know that one day you will heal me. Lord, I know if it is your will, then please heal me. And that's why people are not able to experience what? The manifestation. Then we just now wrote that Jesus' words are what? Spirit and life. So the Spirit of God is the one who gives life to. He gives life to what? The things that you desire from God. And this Spirit of God is in His Word. Because He said, my Word is what? Spirit and life. Praise God. So the more and more you change your mindset, okay, what will the mind, the more and more you uh, set your mind on God's word, what will happen to your desires? It will die off. It will die off. And what desires will you get? Spiritual desires. You, you will get the desires of God. Yes. Praise God. Now when you get the desires of God, will is the Spirit of God who is in you able to fulfill those desires? Yes. 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 
When will he fulfill those desires? When will he fulfill those desires? Psalms 37 verse 4. What does it say? It says, delight yourself also in the Lord. What's the meaning of the word delight also in the also in the Lord? Means set your mind, set your thinking on the things of God or the things in accordance to his word. What will he do? He will give you the desires of your heart. So, I don't know about you. If before I met the Lord, all my desires were all total, complete, sinful. Okay? So, I wanted to earn money fast, retire fast, and enjoy with that money in sinful life. That was my desire. Now, when I met the Lord and I began to get into the word of God, the first thing happened was, my desires were all gone. It, it was replaced with his desires. Now, when it got replaced with his desires, what did God do? He started preaching. No, no, I did not start preaching. <laughs> Before the preaching could come, the verse 5 says, for the desires to come into your life, you, have, you need to do something. What's that? Verse number 5. Commit your ways to the Lord. What's the meaning of the word commit? Do everything that is as for the word. Commit. You, 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 have, you, you have given your, your uh, life. You have not only given your life, you have given your word. You have given your word. And you have said, okay, this is what you want me to do. I commit myself that I will obey you. Even if it is uncomfortable, even if it is uh, painful, even if it is not profitable, but because I have given my word, I will keep my word. That's your word, yes. Praise God. So, the more and more people are committed to God's word and trust in Him, God is the one who will see to it that the desires of your heart are brought to pass. How will it be brought to pass? By the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God is the one who gives life to the desires of that comes from God. But for this desires to come from God to pass, it requires your commitment. So when you are committed to God, is your mind set 